everyone, I'm Rebecca and this is Dora and welcome back to our sewing room. We are picking up right where we left off with the 1890s tea gown project, the reproduction or semi reproduction, I guess, of my 1890s antique tea gown. And it is going really well. And at this point, the next step for me, since I am still waiting on my potential trim, <sighs> is to do the hem, which will be a good like, oh, hi. Oh, oh, I think she's in snuggle mode. Sometimes she gets into snuggle mode and she just like wants all to snuggles, but it does kind of make it hard to do some filming when my cat is in snuggle mode. Isn't that right, Dora? Isn't that right? Yeah, okay. Um, I know they love you. They watch this channel for you anyway, right? I know you do. <laughs> anyway, so I'm starting out with the hem. As I mentioned last week, I'm just doing a super, super narrow hem on this. So I'm turning up the hem a half inch and then a half inch again. So it's one inch total turned up hem. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you all get to see your piece. <laughs> She is such a silly girl. She doesn't do this super often, but she's been doing this all weekend and I love it. So, hem, turned up half inch, turned up half inch again, and that's going to be pressed in place and then sewn by hand. So that will hopefully kill enough time until my trim gets here and I can start doing the trim. So this week it's going to be hem, trim, and pockets, and then the final reveal. So I'm kind of hoping, Dora, get away from the pins. I'm kind of hoping that this won't take all week, but who knows? I gave myself a compassionate deadline last week. I'm starting to like be on the verge of burnout these last couple weeks, and so I'm trying to be good to myself. So I might just take all week with this, and that will be your vlog. But I do hope that you enjoy it anyway, and I'm going to go get to work. So after all of that waffling and waiting for the trim, the third trim finally arrived, and... I've pinned it into place just to get a kind of a mock-up with the new trim that just arrived and the velvet trim option that I liked from the other day. And honestly, I think I'm gonna go with the velvet. I love this color so much. Like, it's it doesn't read, I feel like, on camera, but it's actually, now it's not focusing, but it's actually this lighter royal blue, not the navy that it's kind of reading as. I love the color, I like the texture, but, it's a round cord, like it's really thick. So for example, if I run my hand down here, I go like bump, a bump, a bump, a bump, not even with the pins, like it's all the cord. Whereas if I go over here, it's smooth even with the pins. And so I think I'm gonna go with the velvet. I wish that this velvet ribbon came in this color, but it does not. It comes in just the navy or the light blue. And the problem with the navy is that it looks a lot wider than it is because this blue has light blue edging on the sides, whereas the navy is dark all the way through. And so if you look at them next to each other, this navy looks way wider because this light blue is blending in with the light blue of the dress. It's pretty much the same color. And I like the width minus that edging versus this, which just looks way huge. I mean, comparing that to that, like it looks enormous versus comparing this to this, they're like fairly similar. So yeah, I'm gonna go with the blue velvet. It's going to go in this kind of a pattern here. I'm not exactly positive how I'm applying it yet. I would love to be able to do this by machine, but I kind of have a feeling that's not gonna work. I think I'm gonna need to potentially do this by hand, which is like, <laughs> but it's so narrow and like keeping it in line, I feel like is gonna be a real challenge with doing it on the machine. So yeah, but for now, what I'm going to be working on, I'm probably gonna put the velvet ribbon on the sleeves first, just so I can finish off the bottom of the sleeve. And I'm also going to be pressing the hem tonight the rest of the way so that I can hand sew that. And then I will get to the velvet on here, which is gonna be the trickiest part. But look how cute these ladies are together when they have like the velvet all or the ribbon all pinned into place. They just look like a big sister and a little sister and I love it. It's 
so cute. So I'm very excited with how my project is coming along so far. And I just love them together, even though mine looks humongous compared to this little 1890s lady. <laughs> but still adorable. Anyway, I'm going to get back to work. So what I've done here is with the sleeve opened up, I have drawn all of these lines on. I used my sleeve board to give me a little table because it's only opened up about six inches up here, but I drew all my lines on. This one is like just shy of one and a half, like a 16th inch shy of one and a half from the bottom and then a half inch up, then two and a half inches, then half, half. And the other ones are all about, I guess it'd be seven sixteenths on the antique one. That's how far they are from each other. But I figured since mine's a little bit larger anyway, half inch would be just fine. And hopefully that works out once I put the velvet ribbon on it too. But this part is going to be turned under so that basically once we get to the bottom, it'll be like that as far as the length past the bottom velvet ribbon. And then I'm going to put the velvet ribbon on next and then seam this up. So while I was drawing the lines or after I drew the lines on, I did turn this back inside out and I pinned it together, pinned this seam together to make sure that my lines matched. This one matched fine. This one, on the other hand, you'll notice that the sleeve is not quite even on the bottom, which I did not notice first. So my lines were like super, super off, like literally coming into the middle of each of these lines. It kind of reminded me of hers, <laughs> but I don't want mine to be like that. I want mine to actually meet. So I went and I erased the other ones and did the lines so that they'd actually meet. So now I can go ahead and put my velvet ribbon on there and then do up the seam and then hem the bottom of the wrist. And with my velvet ribbon, I'm going to try to seal off all the ends with my lighter because that way they won't fray inside the sleeve, but it is harder when it's like short pieces of ribbon like this. So I don't know if it will work, but that's my goal. It is the end of the night for me, but as you can see, I have started on the trimming. I've got one row most of the way on. It's all the way on except for this other side right here uh, around the yoke. And then I have the collar completely done. What I'm doing here is I'm kind of going like past where it'll go inside. And then this bit I will tack down by hand, just like whipping those ends down because I figured that way it would be totally covered. And I, I don't know, that's just where my brain went. So I'm going to do the same thing here. It'll fold over instead of going inside like it should have because I've already done that seam. It'll fold over and then I'll tack that down there. And then I have also done one sleeve worth. So all of the bands are on. This is weird shaped because it is pinned into place right now. So that's ready to be hemmed. And likewise, the skirt hem is also all pinned into place all the way around. So that is all ready to be hemmed. So that's gonna be it for me tonight. I'm hoping that tomorrow I will get the other sleeve done and that one actually hemmed. Ideally hem the skirt, but we'll see because I also do have a lot of editing to do. And I mean, it'd be great if I could finish the trim, but I'm not keeping my fingers too crossed that I can finish all of that because Tuesdays typically are one of my like lesser times to so day, I guess, because I actually work at work. So that means I get home way later. So yeah, I will check back in tomorrow. You guys, look at it. So all of the velvet ribbon is now on everywhere except for the pockets because I haven't done the pockets yet. This collar is still flipping up a little bit, which makes me nervous. This is just pinned right now. But uh, the velvet ribbon, by the way, it's not finished, but it is on. And I say that because all of the inside bits, I still need to sew all of those down. So all of that's going to be by hand. Likewise, well, now it's under this button, but the one that is right there under the button, in fact, it might be two rows that are under the button. I couldn't get my sewing foot in there on the machine. So that has to be done by hand also. And I think that's it. It's just all of these all the end bits inside and then that section right there. I did wind up having to do this row here on both sides also by hand, but I did that like as I was going on the machine and that's just because the sleeve was too thick and it was driving the machine away and wouldn't let me sew over it because, you know, it's super, super thick with pleats. And I did have some problems just in general, like kind of steering on here 
I know they're not even, and I knew they weren't going to be even from the get-go because it is narrower up here than it is there. I haven't decided yet if it bothers me that it like goes kind of even and then tapers really quickly. I was originally going to do it so that it would evenly taper and so this middle one would go like here and taper, but instead this stayed pretty regular and just this tapers. And again, I just haven't decided if I if that bothers me. But at the same time, it's like there were so many irregularities on the antique one that it just seems like, well, maybe it's good to have some irregularities because then it's like an ode to the antique one being so irregular. So anyway, I am working away on this. I spent yesterday doing the entire hem. So that is now entirely done now. I could not bring myself to do anything else. So it was just the hem. And then two days ago, I guess, I had gotten one sleeve done. I think I showed you that I had one sleeve done and one row on the collar. But now all of the velvet is done, both sleeves and the collar and yoke. And it's just those little inside bits that need doing, except of course the pockets because I have not even started the pockets yet. So my goal is tomorrow, Friday at the latest, I will do pockets. Tomorrow I'm going to do test pockets. I'm going to do a lot of practice welt pockets and see if I can figure out how to do a welt pocket. And otherwise they're gonna be patch pockets. But overall, I'm very, very pleased with it. Oh, I forgot one other thing actually that still needs to be done. Let me show you. So I actually forgot that I had to undo this to do the velvet ribbon because this velvet ribbon goes right along the top of the pleats and I couldn't get in there at all with these done. And then also I realized that on the extant one, these two velvet ribbons just go under the pleats a little bit and then stop. And you can see where one of the pleats is coming undone on the extant one, that's what's happening. So it just goes to about here and then stops. And I realized, I mean, when I had done the pleats before, it was super, super messy. And I just don't think I can do them by machine. And there was one other reason that I undid the pleats as well. And that was because, and I don't know if you noticed this at all, and I didn't take a before picture, but right here, this was where the seam allowance was coming up and going that way, right underneath this yoke. And this wool is semi-sheer. That seam allowance was white. You could actually see the color difference of the seam allowance underneath the semi-sheer wool. So while I was undoing this for all of that, I also actually undid the yoke right here to about like the length of the pleats. And I just put a little scrap of the blue wool right over, right a strip right here. And I actually, I really don't want to unpin this, so I'm not going to show you, but I actually continued it down to about here. And I just folded in the edges too. So just in case this flaps out a little bit, which it does on the extant, then it wouldn't be that white seam allowance there. It would just be the blue strip kind of blending in with the rest of the wool. So this is also going to have to be by hand just so that it's nice and precise right along the bottom of the velvet and then everything stacked neatly so that you kind of get that look of everything. And that I think is the key to making that bit look better. By the way, I don't think I said this in my second video, but my first video just came out. And by the time I did the second video, adding the sleeves and the collar and the yoke and everything, this was no longer pulling backwards. In the first video, I mentioned that the weight of these pleats was just pulling the whole thing backwards and like choking me and adding all of those elements made it so that it was no longer pulling backwards. So this does not choke me anymore. It fits fine. It also probably helps from where I like took in the sides and stuff. So anyway, that's where we are at. I am hoping to finish this absolutely no later than Friday because if I can't figure out the welt pockets, I will do patch pockets and those are easy and I'll definitely get that done Friday. And then it's all just this hand finishing work. So excited and I am going to sleep. Good night. It is Thursday night and all of the hand sewing is now completely finished. So I did four hooks and bars here in the front collar area. All of the ribbon ends are all stitched down and I stitched down the pleats by hand, which, oh my gosh, that was difficult just because trying to like catch all of the pleats on my needle and line them all up with the velvet, it, that was just thick and very difficult, but it's all done now, so yay. And I just learned something about the extant dress. So I went to go take a 
another look at the welt pockets just to see how they were put together and I realized that apparently this whole time I haven't looked at this welt pocket I have only looked at this welt pocket this welt pocket is a pocket this welt pocket on the other hand is a fake pocket this isn't a pocket it's just a flap what the heck? How have I missed that this whole time? I did the whole examination video. I've looked at this so many times and apparently the whole time has been the other pocket. That just like blows my mind that this is a fake pocket. Needless to say, mine's going to be a real pocket, but oh my God, really? So I just tried my first test pocket and considering I didn't even look at a tutorial first, which I'm sure that I should have, and I was just relying on, oh, well, I did this once like years ago. And also it kind of looks like this is what's going on. Uh, this is what I wound up with. It's not complete rubbish, but it's also not great. I think my biggest issue, honestly, is just that I used like full on half inch seam allowances. And I feel like I needed much smaller seam allowances because what happens is that I got this big old one inch pocket opening. And I'm guessing that if I use smaller seam allowances, this will wind up being much closer together. I don't feel like I need to super stress about this pocket because honestly, like hers isn't great either. <laughs> So if we take a close look at her pocket here, a lot of it is hidden by this flap. This is a whole separate piece that's attached on there. So it starts right under this braid and then goes to here and folds over. And the pocket itself is underneath. So that is where part of the pocket slit is. And then the other part is right here. So it does come closest together like I think that's about a half inch apart, those two seams. So probably that means that if I had a quarter inch seam allowance, it would be fine. But also like, <laughs> there's definitely ugly spots on the side too, like over here. I mean, besides the fact that this is ripping off the dress, there's ugly spots like within the pocket. And so if I have ugly spots within the pocket, it's historically accurate, see? And like, I mean, obviously hers is not great. Look, the top of the dress is smaller than like, what it's going into. So I want to do mine better than hers, but I shouldn't try to be a perfectionist about it because she wasn't either. And of course, now I know that she only did one of them anyway. She probably did this one and was like, crap, I really screwed this up. You know what? My other pocket's just going to be fake, but I'm going to have two good pockets. So that's all. But since it's late, I should probably not be trying to learn something new at midnight. So I think I will try to learn this tomorrow. Okay, so I am doing my second welt test here, or I've kind of now finished my second welt test here, and it went much better than the first one. This time, I actually decided to use a tutorial. I found it on workroomsocial.com. I will link it down below. But basically the tutorial shows you how to make a welt pocket with like using different colors for the different pieces. So that was really handy. And so what's going on here is that I have facings on here. So there is a, basically a facing piece here and a facing piece here. And those are turned to the inside. Now in a traditional welt pocket, this bottom facing would actually be folded so that part of it is still up and closing that gap. And I have not attached the pocket bag on here. The reason that I haven't done that is because on my extant one, instead of a facing right here, she's actually using the pocket bag as a facing. So basically from like here is just one really long strip that is then folded at the bottom and brought up and attached to this facing and on hers, this facing is the part that hangs down. So it hangs down from the top, which I had pressed this up, but um, yeah, it needs to hang down. Oh, I've pinned it up too. So that's why I can't do it with one hand. I've pinned up my facing, but yeah, it would wind up looking something like that. So this is the backing that goes down here. And then the bottom, just look at the back, the bag, which again, instead of a facing, this is the bag on the extant one comes down here, folds and then comes back up and is sewn to this bit right here. And then the little flap on hers is just a completely separate applied piece that basically she's taken some sort of like strip 
done seams inside, you know, turned it so seams are inside and put the trim on and then has applied it so that it's a fully enclosed strip. She's just whipped that along the bottom, both inside and out and along the sides so that it goes up and closes over that pocket. So I think I'm feeling confident enough to do this on the actual. I need to figure out some dimensions, like how big the pocket bag should be and how wide this should be, because I just literally just drew a random slit. But the key, I think, that made this one a lot different than the other one, besides me just trying to apply the pocket bag directly to both sides, which is not how hers was made up, but I think the, the real key is that this has quarter inch seam allowances. So my seam allowances are able to get way smaller. And then also I didn't do a good job of clipping my corners at all on this one. You can see just how short that is. One of the tips that they mentioned in the tutorial I looked at is to start clipping your corners like an inch away from the corner. So that's what I did here. I don't know if that shows up on camera at all, but it's it starts way far out and then gets to the corner. So I think that that really, really helped. And honestly, this is probably about the size that I want. Like, means wide enough for my phone. That's the tutorial. And let's see, yeah. Actually, it's a great size for my hand also. So I think I might just go with <laughs> this random test width that I just made up without even measuring it and do that. So the main thing then is figuring out exactly where the pocket top needs to go. I am pretty confident that I wanted that right there. So I don't think I'm gonna put it on again. I know I should, cause I'm cutting into fabric, but that would involve a corset and a petticoat and all that sort of stuff and I don't wanna do that. So I am going to mark my slit here, do the same thing on the other side where I don't have a pin. So it's gonna be a little harder to mark, but I have to make sure that they're even obviously, and then go from there. And I'm feeling a lot better now about what pockets. So what I've done here as the first step is to make up the pocket flaps. I've got the one here and then the one over here. And these are just made out of strips of fabric that were I think seven and a half inches wide as in this way and seven inches long this way. And then they were stitched on the sides and here leaving a gap of about an inch or so right here, or I guess actually right here because this is the that's the fold this is the opening side so the gap is right here and then that was all turned right side out and then I applied the velvet ribbons to here and then the third velvet ribbon will go over the edge of this so the third one has to be put on as I'm actually putting on the pocket flap but this was what I have first and I will be putting these to the inside, stitching them down before I go and stitch the pocket flap on. But what I'm doing is I'm using them as placements for where the pockets should go. So this one I definitely like. This one I'm not sure if it's even. I'm gonna have to actually like, you know, take it off the form and <laughs> double check because I think this dart actually goes down just a little bit further than this dart and so it's throwing me off. I don't really care if the darts are just a little bit uneven because I don't feel like it is that obvious, but I do care if the pockets are uneven because that's going to be super, super obvious. So I'm going to have to balance the pockets off of like the waist maybe and just make sure that they're in the same spot and the same like width out to the side. It's a couple of inches from the side seam because the pocket ends right there. So yeah, I think that's like about two inches from the side seam and then about one inch from the dart. And once I have that all placed nicely, then I will be able to draw the line for the welt across the center of that, or across, I guess, the bottom edge-ish of that maybe, and do the rest of the pocket. I just want to pop in and say that I'm rather proud of myself for estimating where the right side pocket went so closely. So, okay, I just went and pinned everything together. I had already basted it while it was on the form just so that I knew that everything would lay nicely and I kind of figured I would know approximately where it went and so I basted it around there. And then I pinned the sides together. So I actually, I've pinned the very center fronts and then I've pinned in this seam allowance so that it connects with the seam allowance of the hip of the other side all the way down from the armpit. And then I stuck pins through from the left hand side to this side where the pocket would go. And this line was my estimation pocket. This line is the actual pocket. 
Likewise, this was the estimation. This was the actual. I was off by like mm, an eighth, a nah, quarter of an inch on this side and an eighth of an inch on this side. I'm pretty impressed with myself. Like, wow. And then the other thing that I did is I prepped all of my pocket pieces. So these are the actual pocket pieces bags which I've decided I'm not going to use it as the facing on the bottom I'm going to take one step further and actually make the facing like I did on this sample just because I think it's a really nice clean look so these are the pocket bags that will attach the facings they are just sort of a blue gray cotton like a quilting cotton and I've searched the outsides because they're going to hang loose in the side of the dress and I just feel like they should be finished so they're surged and then these are the facings. I've cut four of them. These are two by six and an eighth because that's what this wound up being was six and an eighth inches wide. These are six and an eighth, by the way, also, but they're about 18 inches long because I figured that was like plenty big for hands or phones or snacks or whatever you need to put in your pocket. So yeah. Oh, and these are folded in half, as I mentioned before. So it's not like it's an 18 inch deep pocket. It's like a eight and a half. Yeah. So that is all my pocket pieces and now I just have to butt these up on either side of that line. So what that's going to look like is approximately something like this. So we have one of these. I am going to connect these dots just to make it easier. We have one of these that will go there and then the other one will go up here like that. And then they will be stitched a quarter inch from that middle line there. So they'll be stitched like that until it gets to those end points. So I have to mark those end points on here. And then I cut open the slit doing that little diamond to the corner thing where it's one inch from the edge to the corner on both sides here and then these get turned to the inside and then the bag gets added so even though it's like midnight I'm gonna go ahead and do this because I'm feeling really excited about it and yeah so once I pressed these guys to the inside then it was time to attach the pocket bag and the pocket bag gets attached with like the right sides together but really they're the insides of the pocket that get attached together and then the seam allowance gets pressed down towards the pocket and then I just kind of like pinned the pocket shut like this so that I would know how it's supposed to hang here so that I would then know how the pocket should come down and fold. So once I pinned it like that, then I pinned along this side here. This is the fold down at the bottom. So like it's not even on the sides. You can see where the seam allowances vary. And that's because I used two inch strips for both sides of these, which really I probably should have used like a one and a half inch strip and a two inch strip. But you know, whatever, it worked fine. And then I attached them. And then I sewed up the sides of the pocket. Now, the one thing that I can't quite figure out how to do, and maybe it's just something I have to do by hand. Oh, P.S. I didn't read the instructions for any of this because I started reading the instructions on that site that I talked about earlier. And by the time I got to this point, I couldn't like my brain couldn't process any of it. So I just kind of made up the bag attaching part. But the one thing is that I can't sew like this close to the pocket slit by machine. So I'm thinking that has to be done by hand because what happens is that I right now I have this little gap right here on the side of the pocket where it's like not actually attached and I'm guessing that with the pins out yeah it's like there's the, a little finger width bit that isn't stitched. So I mean that's going to be blocked off by my pocket flap anyway. So it's not even an issue if I just like top stitch that bit by machine. That's an option I could do. But yeah so that's how that bit works. It's already one o'clock so I'm going to really quickly put the bag on the other side and then call it a night. Unfortunately I won't be finishing the pocket flaps tonight but I'm so close so I should be able to finish them tomorrow. So Lion is trying to tell me that I'm supposed to be done for the night because it is way past when I was supposed to go to sleep, but that's what they look like so far. I'm really pleased with them. Like, I don't think it's necessarily exactly how a well pocket looks normally, but it looks right for these pockets and I just need to add the flaps and then they're done. So it'll be the flap and then that last piece of velvet ribbon that'll go over the join and that's it for both of them. There's the, oh, she doesn't want to turn. There's the other one right there. 
And so it's so close. I'm almost done with the entire dress. And that's really exciting. And probably the next time I show it to you, it'll be like on me and done. And I'll do a little reveal photo shoot thing. Let's do a little project wrap up on this tea gown. For one thing, it is not as warm as it looks. I mean, I've known this whole time that this is lightweight wool, like it's actually semi sheer wool and it's only lined with cotton. So I've known that this isn't thick or anything like that, but I feel like it still looks thick. And I've got to say, I was out there for I don't know, maybe 20 plus minutes taking pictures. And it's supposedly right around 50 degrees today. And I was cold, <laughs> like actually cold. Like my hands are in my pockets a lot of times cause I was literally just cold. So that's one thing, it's really not as warm as it looks. Two, I am having uh, one sort of fit issue, I guess technically kind of two sort of fit issues with everything. And that is, I have actually, stuck some pins under my collar right here because when I first put this on the yoke section was just like poofing up weirdly and I could tell that the fabric underneath it was poofing up as well but with the pleats on the yoke it was just super super exacerbated in that poof and so I pinned it down I'm gonna have to do something to fix it I guess that I just made the neckline probably just too long in that area. And once all the sleeves and the ribbon and everything were on, it was <laughs> made a lot more obvious than when everything was sitting a little bit farther and flatter down. So yeah, that needs to be fixed. I hope that I fix it. I'm really bad about actually fixing things that I notice after I have worn them. Technically, I have not worn this for the thing that I have made this for, which is a birthday tee yet. So I should fix it before then. And then the other part of the fit issue was when I put it on, there was like a really sunken fall off right here. And I get that a lot because I do really like from right here, I go in very abruptly. And so what I actually did was I stuck a handkerchief underneath it, which kind of filled that out. It might be that I need to wear this with like a corset cover that has one ruffle on it. Unfortunately, I don't own one of those. I have a corset cover with lots of ruffles and I have a just plain corset cover, but I think a one ruffle corset cover would really fix that and fix that problem. Otherwise, other than that, it really does fit very well. It's super, super comfortable. The pockets are like 
dream pockets. They are so deep that I can almost not reach the bottom of it. I, they're loaded right now. I have like tons of hairpins in it. My really bad remote for my camera because, oh my God, it took so long to take pictures because I can't find my usual remote. And this one kept disconnecting the Bluetooth. So that was great. So yeah, they're full of stuff right now and they are literally like my fingertips are on the bottom of the pockets right now and you can maybe see like, okay, this is where it is in my arms. So that much of my hand can all fit into the pocket, which is super, super awesome. The other thing I realized while taking pictures is that this look does not go with up hair. I'm not really sure. I assume for visiting and stuff, if people were coming to tea, they would have had their hair done. But when I took my hair down and put it into this braid, which yes, this is a fake braid. My hair is not this big. <laughs> but when I took it down, I just felt like the outfit looked so much better, so much more relaxed. And yeah, so I think I'll be styling it that way for a birthday tea as well. But overall, I'm super, super happy with this project. I will hopefully fix the one little bit that needs fixing and then I can call it good and done. And I'm excited to wear this for my birthday tea with Emily. Our birthdays are super close together and we're in the same bubble. And so we have decided to just have a birthday tea in my dining room together and yay. <laughs> So second pandemic birthday, here we are. And I'm really excited to add this to my costume wardrobe and hopefully to wear this on later occurrences as well, because it does feel just both comfy and dramatic at the same time. What a wonderful thing is a tea gown. So anyway, I do hope that you liked this video and that you enjoyed this whole series of videos on this project. If you like this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week with my sewing vlogs like this on Tuesdays and other costuming content out on Saturdays, but I post every day over on my Instagram. So please go follow me on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to support all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Ko-fi accounts down below in the description. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patron Heidi. Thank you all so so much once again. Have a wonderful week and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!